Good day to you. I'm really uh, happy to be back with another edition of 26 Minutes with the podcast for change makers, brave souls, people that are making an impact, and people that are leading the charge in this, uh, you know, interesting world we live in. And today I'm really thrilled to have uh, Rachel Thompson. Rachel is uh, uh, an amazing YouTuber. She's a uh, uh, does speaking and teaching, and she's a uh, Reiki practitioner and a very gifted healer. And she's got a background too in social work and social services. And she joins us today from Charlotte, North Carolina, where it probably looks like that in 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 where you're at, right? With the, the it does, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We we're getting here in Toronto, where our snow is melting. So that's <laughs> you're getting there, <laughs> yeah. which is kind of dovetails nicely into our topic today. It's about trauma. And because, um, you know, winter can be traumatic, <laughs> especially when we, we got 30 centimeters of snow a few weeks ago. That's traumatic. Um, I got to shovel that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, trauma is a hot topic these days, uh, Rachel. And you've just uh, in the past week or so have come out with a, a meditation activation dealing with trauma. Why, why is trauma speaking to you now? And why why that, that video? Because this is the first sort of, uh, you know, program that you've offered around trauma that I know of. Mm -hmm. why, why this? Why now? Um, so what I noticed in my own journey is that the effects from trauma wrecked the biggest havoc in my life in all areas because of, um, you know, trauma affects our brain. It affects the, the amygdala. It, you know, it affects how we view the world. And, um, you know, in my own journey, like, I, I don't know if I've ever felt safe. Maybe when I was a little, little kid, I felt safe. But even looking at my own journey and the things that have happened to me as an adult, I never felt safe as an adult. I didn't realize I didn't feel safe, but I can see that now. I I, I didn't because of the trauma that I experienced. Um, and and when we, when we talk about trauma, I know a lot of times people associate traumas with very big life events. And it can be certainly, but it's a mix. It doesn't have to be big life events. It is just a an emotional experience. Um, so it can be trauma that we didn't even, we don't even remember we experienced such as, um, you know, maybe kids being mean to us in, in school or, um, just different experiences that we had with people or even, um, accidents like trauma to the body, things like that, that just, they, they create an energy within us and, and they shape our our brain they they shape our nervous system they um they really have an impact when they're not processed so as an adult i realized that i didn't feel safe and um the more i was very determined to number one figure out my life purpose and number two manifest that and the more i manifested it and the more i saw my physical reality shifting and changing in a way that I wanted more than anything, the more anxiety I had, the less I felt safe. Um, and in the people that with, with the people that, um, I work with, I have heard the same thing being reflected back. Um, you know, I, I run a group, um, I have the seven day timeline jump challenge, and I have heard from many people that there will be this self-sabotage that comes up whenever you are trying to experience this level of freedom, this level of joy, this level of happiness. So you have the tools and I provide a lot of tools to help you, to help you live the life that you deserve to live. And so you have these tools, you have these teachings, there's, you know, there's so much information out there and people are consuming it and they're ready they are really ready to live a life that is free from this restriction and what feels like just like this weight and this baggage that we've been carrying around. And so you, you take a course or you do these meditations or you, you, you go on this journey. And what you find is if you have any of this trauma, that's not being processed, it will continue to sabotage 
you. You'll continue to sabotage yourself. You will continue to, you will literally manifest everything you want and feel so stressed out the whole time or so worried or anxious the whole time because there's this unprocessed energy still within you. Um, And so in experiencing that in my own journey and really um, in the most more recent parts of my journey, being focused on feeling safe, um, in experiencing a life that is, that's not filled with stress, you know, a life that has freedom and has abundance and has love. I've been working on um, really feeling safe and worthy of that in my own journey. And then when I provide these different tools to help others do the same, and I get the same feedback, so much of it comes down to trauma. And so that's why I felt very guided to do this trauma release session that I put out recently. Does it help to uh, Rachel that this notion of our trauma has come really uh, it come into the forefront in a big, humongous way, especially in the past three years since the um, pandemic started three years ago, mm-hmm. and then um, and then all of a sudden, you know, noise about a documentary featuring Gabor Mate. Um, who's a you know a author and speaker and therapist and 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 does you know humongous work around trauma? Does that help bring tr- this notion of our trauma into the forefront? And then, like, why do you think this is sort of showing up on a major level uh, for us now? in this space and in this time that we're in? Um, so I, for anybody who is new to me or maybe some of the things I might talk about, I do come from a more energetic spiritual perspective. So I want to speak from that space. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, you can look at it from many different perspectives, but that would be the one I'm comfortable talking from. And that's that's kind of my quote unquote truth of how I live. Um, yeah. So we are entering... a a new age in our conscious collective Um, yogis have talked about it. It's, it's been in texts for a while now. And we're, we're in the age of Aquarius, a lot of calling it um, and the age of energy and the age that we're moving away from is one of trauma and competition and lack and just a really dense energy where we just have constantly re-traumatized one another. I mean, we carry so much trauma from our ancestry um, and our our family dynamics without, without even realizing it. And just our society at large, like the things that we consider normal in our society, like when you zoom out from a higher perspective, they just seem crazy. You know, yeah, just we're not. Yeah, you know, we're not. Like how we treat each other and just, I mean, there's just so many levels. So we are moving out of that, but we're just at the beginning of this new age. So when you're at the beginning of something new and the age that we're moving into, at least in my perspective and how I feel and what many people are talking about now is this age of um, cooperation, this age of unity, one where we are coming back to who we truly are, which is, um, you know, the, it, it, we're experiencing our divine um, nature in human form, coming back to love. And, you know, when you think about it, I don't think anybody, if they would sit back and think the life I really want to live would be one where I'm constantly fighting with people where, you know, everybody's arguing on social media, where there's war, where there's lack, nobody's going to sit back and say, that's the life I want to live. They're going to want to live a life of love and abundance because that's who we truly are. Right. And, and com- oh, competition too. Yeah, You know, I think that's why social media gets a bad rap, because here you are kind of feeling sorry for yourself. And then you go on and you see what your friends are up to. It's like, holy shit, they're they're having a better life than I am. What's wrong with me? Right. Exactly. And, and, and our trauma kind of showing up in, in, in that way, too. Right. It's coming up in all the ways. <laughs> um, so as and we're also moving from a place, you know, our parts of our brain were designed for survival and our ego, which creates this competition um, and all these ego programs that create a lot of unnecessary suffering for us and for others. Um, We create it, our egos create suffering for others and then they react from the ego place. Like 
all of this does not serve us. We don't need it anymore. We're, we are not in the space of, of, of survival anymore. We have transcended past that as I, I understand that some people are, um, and I'm, I'm not trying to be insensitive to that, but on a large scale, when you look at humanity in general, we are not worried about like scavenging for food anymore, right? Like we have really, we have, we have moved to a space where these survival mechanisms are more of a hindrance than they are helping us. And so we are completely transforming how we function, how we think, how we believe, and everything that's not in alignment with where we are going, where we are evolving to, is coming up to the surface to be transcended. And, and trauma is a big part of that. Yeah. The, 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 there's a definition of it. It's it's a term used to describe the challenging emotional consequences that living through a, a distressing event can have for an individual. Traumatic events can be difficult to define because the same event may be more traumatic for some people and, and then others. And then you've got big T trauma, death, you know, divorce, you know, big, big thing, accidents, loss of a limb or life. Um, and then you've got small T trauma. So, um, yeah, I guess, you know, what's the distinction for you there? Like, in terms of, can, can do you find you handle the small T traumas easier than the big T's? Um, me personally? Mm -hmm. Um. Now, I guess it would be, hmm. I had many, many years of having significant traumatic events. Not, I've had many years of having unprocessed some very significant traumatic events in my life. Okay. So I had several that I would say would be big traumas in my life. And I was, I didn't know how to process them. Some mm -hmm. I was too young. I didn't have the tools. Um, yeah. Others, maybe I was a bit older, but I still didn't have the tools. I didn't have the emotional tools. I just didn't, I wasn't able to come to a space of that. Um, and, and I had to do so much work with processing those big traumas later on because I realized how much it impacted me. Um, so I want to give an example. Um, so my dad passed away when I was 20. I did not process that trauma. Um, I took a week off of college and I, that was it. And my dad and I were very, very close. I took a week off of college. I went back to school. I got straight A's that semester. Like I just like did not. And then anytime it kind of came up in the, I don't know, following several years to be processed, I would only let a little bit come up and then I would just shove it back down again. And then whenever I started my spiritual journey, I, I worked through that trauma and it was a lot, like, I'm telling you like gut wrenching cries where I couldn't breathe. I was crying so hard because that trauma was stored within me for so long that when I finally let it out, it was just, there was a lot of it. Um, and so about two years ago, my, my doggy passed away and I love my dog. And so I said, when he passed away, I'm going to process this correctly. I'm not going to do what I did with my dad. And so I gave myself all the time that I needed to grieve. I let myself feel my feels and I still miss my dog. I still love my dog, but I, but the trauma was processed after the event. I didn't need to continue to bring it back up and process it. And that was my realization of how to properly, whenever you have a quote unquote, big traumatic event, how to let yourself process it. And I could see the effects of not letting myself process something that was big and internalizing it and holding on to it for all those years and all the effects it had versus going through a traumatic event and giving myself the proper space. And I had the tools at that time to process it. So I, I didn't carry that energy with me any longer. You know, we all go through it on some level or another. How many people do you think are aware of their trauma? Because you became aware of the effects. Um, I think uh, that... If it was a percentage of the population. Oh, gosh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Do you want to hazard a guess or... 
I don't feel comfortable guessing. Um, to be honest with you, I think that more people are becoming aware of their trauma. I think more people are becoming aware of their trauma to the extent that they're ready to become aware of it. And does that mean that they get to like the deepest core layers? That is not a fun process. <laughs> that is really not a fun process. And I don't know if everybody's ready to go through that. You really have to be ready to go through that process. But I do see just in everyday experiences how people are processing more and when something happens they they do want they more are more open to process it to the extent that they to their that they're ready for um so i have no idea what the percentage would be on that no it would be interesting to do some research on that huh yeah it would be it would be so how, how does how does our trauma influence our beliefs and patterns in life because like i know personally so you know we were talking before we started um that i was doing some journaling about my traumas and 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 the beliefs and the patterns that have uh developed throughout my entire life as a result mm -hmm. um and 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 they're differing traumas it could have been like you know uh a comment about my physical appearance or it could have been while well, the loss of my dad or a marriage breakup, but they definitely influence to this day. And I have to be aware of it. Mm -hmm. My beliefs and my patterns. How, how, how does it, how does our trauma, uh, whether it's a big T or little T uh, influence our beliefs and, and patterns? Um, so there's so many different ways that you can look at this from, you can look at it. I mean, trauma really does impact the brain and it impacts the nervous system. And um, it, it it can make you, it can, somebody who has experienced trauma, they can walk around with a nervous system that is um, almost always in fight, flight, freeze, shutdown mode. And so it just, it's almost like you are constantly, your, your brain and your nervous system is constantly being re-traumatized because of the way that you're perceiving the world. You're always looking for that next threat because it is a survival mechanism and the trauma that impacted your brain has kind of built your system to be like I, in this state of always having to protect myself, whether that is fight, flight, freeze, shut down. Um, so there's that part. Um, it coming from an energetic standpoint, which is, you know, partially where I come from, um, is it's this energy is stored within your being. And you will continue to create from that energy, you will continue to unconsciously create the same traumatizing experiences. They might come in different people, different shapes, different sizes, but at the core level of it, it will be the same theme of trauma that is being recreated within your reality because you're still holding that energy within you. Yeah. So we, we experience these traumas and then we unconsciously and unintentionally continue to reinforce them. And then we begin to believe that is who I am. That is how the world is. Um, but it's, it's not, it's this unconscious programming or this, this energy that is recreating the same situations. Right. So how can we shift? Is it, is it an easy process? Cause I, I feel it is. I think it's a choice. It's a choice. Like, it stops now, you know, it's a choice. Absolutely. And there's so many ways, um, to approach it. And I, I feel that there's, there's not necessarily just like one route. Right. And like, so for me, I have done all of it. Like I have done like the physical, I do, I do exercises to reset my vagus nerve. Um, you know, whenever you are in a fight or flight response, when your nervous system is really activated, your frontal lobe kind of shuts down. Like you're, you're in this like survival mode. So the way that you can regulate is really going into your body, just deep breaths. And then once you're a bit more regulated, then you can begin with the self-talk. I am safe. I am safe. I know that this is triggering me from a past experience, but in this situation, I am safe. Really kind of reparenting yourself in some cases. Um, and then, you know, the part that I like to go into is the energy part and really feeling um, there's so many different ways to release the energy. You can do it through yoga. You can do it through breath work. You can do it through acupuncture. You can do it through Reiki. There's so many different energy, there use of crystals, like all the different, um, there's so many different modalities that you can use, but I feel that 
um, understanding trauma and healing from trauma and releasing yourself from trauma is the, the best practice would be all of the practices. So addressing the physical body, addressing the mental stories and the mental beliefs, and then um, addressing the energetic component as well. Right. And don't add to your trauma. You know, if, if, if the news is triggering you, don't watch it. Mm-hmm. Uh, watch yourself talk. You know, we, we're, we're, we're our own worst critics, especially, mm-hmm. you know, I work with entrepreneurs. We're our own worst critics. Oh, damn, I'm not good enough. I'm not creative. Oh, I, I've heard that one a lot in my work and coaching and training. I'm not creative. I'm I, I'm not good enough, right? Mm-hmm. All these things are still playing out. It's like, well, who said? Where did that come from? You know? Um, yeah, and I like then you, what you're suggesting, what I heard there is just have a really m- mindful practice of self-regulation and of, of your, doing your own healing work, like yoga, breath work, you know, Reiki meditation, going for a walk, tapping into nature. Mm-hmm. And you said that our our traumas are like it, it, it it's stored within us. Uh, Dr. Pedram Shoje wrote a book or came out with a book uh, this uh, last year, last summer, on trauma, and they go so far as to say that um, trauma, if you've got extra weight, it's it might not be what you're eating; it could be the mm-hmm. The trauma and the toxins within are stored in your fat cells. Mm. Like that. So we're even carrying our trauma with us. Mm-hmm. And, and I know that's a pattern for me. Um that that it's it's definitely I, I feel that 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 extra little rubber tire around the middle is uh protection mm-hmm. from from further hurt. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a manifestation of it and it manifests in different ways. And that's certainly one way that it, that it manifests. Mm. We've got a few minutes left in our Mm -hmm. 26 minutes with, um, but we'll have a couple of extra questions for our deeper dive. What prompted you to do that activation and meditation? Like what, you you know, this is something, this is a bit of new territory for you. So what prompted you to do that activation? Um, And what's the outcome if somebody was to go onto the, your website and, yeah, uh, all my activations come from divine guidance. Uh, so it's kind of like I get the inspiration from it. And I, I, um, it's something that I'm like, okay, do I put this on YouTube? Do I put this on my website? Do it like, what do I do with this? Um, so it really just came from divine guidance. And like I said, it came from my own journey and that I have realized that, um, I, I know how to manifest pretty well. I, I am a, I'm a good manifester, but there was a energy that I felt had control over me that whenever I would manifest and I like literally would manifest everything that I wanted, it would almost feel like it overpowered me and it would either try to stop it or block it. Or I would just like have these feelings of like anxiety. So it's like the more what I would deem would be success in my life, things that I wanted and I knew how to manifest and I did manifest it. Then I had something that would come up always. And the more people that I have worked with, with these, these techniques, the more I saw that trend. Um, And so that would be the reason, because I'm like, I am teaching, I'm giving people these tools. We can have freedom. We can manifest the lives we desire, but if there's that part of you, that energy within you, that once you have everything, it's going to try to not from like a malicious place, but from like a protection place is going to try to either stop you, sabotage you, um, like block you, resist all that kind of stuff, then we need to address that. And we just need to be, I mean, and that's one part of it. I guess that would be part of the inspiration. But the other part of the inspiration is we deserve to be free from this. We do not deserve to continue to re-traumatize ourselves or to create experiences or align with experiences that continue to re-traumatize ourselves. It's time for us collectively, I feel, to break free from these patterns, the ancestral patterns, the the patterns that have been with us our whole lives. It's it's time for freedom. I agree. I, I so feel that way. And um because it's so tiring, you know, I mean, we, we, it, a lot of people I'm talking to, they're, they're tired. And it's like, mm-hmm. we're tired of this. 
it's like we're carrying around extra baggage you know it's like yeah hello i've arrived me me and my trauma and my patterns and my beliefs we're here. <laughs> yep. well can you leave those at the door and just come in and let's have a good time <laughs> yes yes oh. and and i feel like that's kind of where we're being called to you know my my sister just had a baby and it's the first new being in this the new generation and I feel there was so much energetic work held on the, in the family members um, in my family to release from this ancestral stuff. There's a saying that I love and I live by it says it ran through my ancestry or it ran through my family until it ran into me, meaning hey. it stops. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, so many people are in that stage too. It's like, it's, it's done. It's, it's done here. I'm not do- carrying this any longer. Yeah. We're, we're flush out of time for the 26 minutes, but we're going to have a deeper dive. Real quick, you have a big event coming up that's also, in a way, trauma and belief and pattern related. Do you want to just share that that event? Are you okay to, the money event? Or? Yeah, so we're still in the planning stages, but maybe yeah. by the time you have this out, we will um, have concrete mm. um, links. But we are, uh, me and a, a group of other women are doing a, um, a money, uh, an event, a workshop, that is going to help you transcend your money blocks so that everybody can be abundant because everybody deserves to be abundant in whatever yeah. ways that means for them. I do. We all do. Where do we reach you um, to, to connect? Yeah. Uh, Reiki Rachel is my YouTube. Reiki with Rachel is Instagram. And I think that's what it is on TikTok. And then Reiki with Rachel.com is my website. Wonderful. What a joy. Um, for those who want to learn a little more, we're going to have a little, uh, couple extra questions and time with Rachel. But thank you for being our fourth guest on 26 Minutes With. Thank you. Enjoy. <laughs> Thanks. All right. Stay tuned. We're going to show you the deeper dive is going to be below. And uh, we'll be uh, right back with a little bit more on trauma and its uh, effects. Stay with us. <laughs> 